Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we follow last episode's theme and show you the Split Second table from the Wheel of Fortune tournament, round 2. We have Bruno Costa on Idris Storm, Enrique Pusinho on Anya Filter, Late is also on Anya Filter, his first pet deck, and Rodrigo Diaz is on Rakdos Lord of Riots based on Sekeria's list. Bruno won the dice roll and emulgant once, finding a single Bloodstained Mire for lands, but paired with a Dark Ritual and Green Monolith for possible ramp. Ponder can dig into a second land and possibly fire an early Windfall to disrupt his opponent's hands and get a new hand. Waste Not can be great if he manages to drop before Windfall and Jessica's Will might be harder to access both modes without much colored mana for Idris. Enrique Mulligan once and found a nice hand, able to cast Anya turn 1. Barbarian Ring as a single land, but with a Lotus Petal and Dark Ritual for ramp. Entomb will help on getting World Guarder Dragon to the yard and Underworld Breach in case the game goes long. And he still has two Madness cards to start filtering through his deck, Hell Mongrel and Asylum Visitor. Late kept his first 7 able to turn to Enya, with a Snow Covered Swamp and a Badlands for lands, and Soul Ring and Simeon Spirit Guide for ramp. Blood Mad Vampire and Violent Eruption to cycle through Anya, and Dark Quidring can actually be good removal although it doesn't hit any of his opponent's commanders. Lastly, Rodrigo Mulligan down to 6, keeping a Luxury Suite and a Graven Carnage for lands, with an Arcane Signet and a Talisman of Indulgence for ramp. Opposition Agent might snap some Tutor and Rakdos Charm is a versatile piece of interaction, especially versus two Anya players. He sent to the bottom Myojin of Knight's Reach. Ready for this match? Bruno starts his turn with a Bloodstained Mire that he cracks for an Underground Sea. He follows it with a Dark Ritual, and then a nicely top-decked Talisman of Dominance, allowing him to cast Waste Not before passing. That Windfall will be extra juicy if he finds a land from the top. Eric plays a Barbarian Ring and casts a Lotus Petal, that he cracks right away for a Dark Ritual as well. He is able to cast Anya turn 1 and passes. Late goes ahead and plays a Badlands. He casts a Soul Ring and passes to Rodrigo, who simply plays a Luxury Suite, finishing his turn. Bruno fails to draw a land, so he fires his Ponder. He finds and casts a Lion's Eye Diamond and passes the turn. In his end step, Eric activates Anya, discarding a Twins of Mora State, triggering Anya and Waste Not, providing a zombie to Bruno. Enrique then gets to his turn, draws and casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting an Asylum Visitor, finishing his turn. Late plays a Command Tower and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide for Red to cast his commander Anya as well, leaving black mana for Entomb and passes. Rodrigo finds and plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a Badlands, but passes, refraining from casting any of his rocks, holding on to his Rakta Charm in case any Anya player decides to go off. Bruno draws and goes into combat, sending the zombie at Rodrigo, as he has no blockers. He then casts his Grim Monolith and passes the turn. In his end step, Enrique discards a Hell Mongrel, triggering Anya and Waste Not, and then follows it with an Entomb, for a World Guard Dragon, of course. He goes to his turn and the table is tense. However, he decides to do nothing and simply pass. In his end step, Late activates his Anya, discarding a land, triggering Waste Not for double black, but Bruno has nothing to use it on. Late gets to his turn and plays a Cabal Pit, and passes as well quite the Rakdos standoff we have here. Rodrigo plays a Graven Cairns and casts his Arcane Signet before passing. Bruno goes right into combat, sending both zombies at Enrique, who blocks one. In his second main phase, he fires his Windfall. Enrique responds by activating Anya, discarding Murderous Compulsion, triggering Anya and Waste Not, so Bruno draws. He then activates Anya again, discarding Necro Goif, triggering Anya and Waste Not, creating a zombie token. He does it again, discarding a Blood Mad Vampire for another zombie and actually casts it. He draws and discards Brain Gorgers to Anya again, for another zombie and a draw. He passes on Windfall and it's now late to turn to start his maddening shenanigans. He also discards a Blood Mad Vampire for another zombie, and then a Verdant Catacombs giving double black to Bruno. It's now Rodrigo's time to respond and he fires a Dark Ritual into Opposition Agent. Bruno now responds with a Noxious Revival on World Gorgia, to be put on the top of Enrique's library, and he responds with a Deflecting Slot, changing the target to his Lotus Petal. The Windfall now resolves and everyone discards and draws 5 cards, triggering Waste Knot and Latest Anya as he discarded 3 cards with Menace, so he lets her untap once and responds to the untap triggers, discarding a Wooded Foothills, triggering Waste Knot for a double black and draws a card. Second untap trigger resolves, and he responds to the last untap by activating Anya again, discarding Entomb, triggering Waste Knot, and Bruno draws a card. Late then draws. Last untap trigger resolves, and he untaps Anya. However, he messes up the triggers in his head and discards the land, thinking he still has another untapped trigger. Waste Knot gives Bruno two more black mana, and he untaps Anya, thinking he had one last trigger. He now starts discarding mana cards, a Scofield River giving another zombie to Bruno and drawing a card. Then a Voldaren Pariah for another zombie and draw, and then a Sulphur Spring for a double black and one last card. 
In the end, this mistake gave him one more card and two more black mana to Bruno, which eventually didn't change much of the outcome of the game. The last waste not triggers from the windfall now resolve and Bruno adds two more black mana to his pool, creates two more zombies and draws eight more cards. He thinks for a bit and casts a Felwar Stone, plays a mana confluence and then casts an Abrade on the opposition agent, to which Late actually responds with an Imp's Mischief to change the target to Enrique's Anya. In response, Enrique activates her, discarding a Psychotic Haze, triggering Waste Knot for another card for Bruno. He does it again, this time with a Violent Eruption, and then once more discarding Alchemist's Greeting, before letting a Braid resolve. Bruno now casts a Mana Vault and follows it with a Brainstorm. He then casts a Lotus Petal and follows it with a Mana Crypt. With so much mana, he still casts a Cabal Ritual, and then a Reign of Filth. He sacrifices two lands for Double Black and casts Deathright Shaman. He cracks his petal and fires a Yogmoth's Wheel, which resolves. He recasts his Lotus Petal and cracks it to cast a Braid once again on the opposition agent, which is stopping him to tutor for an outlet. He then casts a Dark Ritual and a Cabal Ritual, both from the graveyard and exiling them. He now casts a Jessica's Wheel for 5 red mana and fires a Wheel of Fortune. Players check the Waste Knot triggers, providing Bruno with 6 more black mana, 3 more zombies and 8 more cards. Will he be able to end it now? Blade shuffles his graveyard into his deck with his Ulamog trigger, and now Bruno casts an Arcane Signet, proceeding with a Storm. He now casts an Intuition from the graveyard and Rodrigo fires a Rattle Mental Blast. Did both players forget Intuition would simply exile the cards, or was this a bait all along? As Bruno now cracks his LED for triple blue, exiling quite a juicy hand, and casts Windfall from his graveyard. Late has two untapped triggers from Anya since he discarded two Madness cards, so he taps her and then activates her discarding a Bloodstained Mire, providing two more black mana to Bruno. He lets the last trigger resolve, untapping her and passing priority on the rest of the Waste Knot triggers, which keep filling Bruno's board, his mana pool and his hand. Bruno now casts a Mox Diamond, discarding an Urborg, and then casts Sensei's Divining Top. He activates it looking at the top three and rearranging them. He now casts a Duress, targeting Late, as he is the last one with open mana. Late ponders for a bit and sees his win escape between his fingers, as Bruno discards his Necromancy. There was no point in casting it since Bruno had Noxus Revival in his graveyard. Bruno recasts Reign of Field from his graveyard just to pump his storm, and then floats mana with his rocks and casts Dramatic Reversal. He then casts Gitaxin Probe, targeting Enrique, and draws a card. He casts Brainstorm from the graveyard and then follows it with a Chrome Mox, exiling a Passing Flames. He now casts a Dockside Exortionist for three treasures and then sacrifices a zombie to cast Culling the Weak for 4 black mana. He then casts a Veil of Summer, actually forgetting to draw as the next card he was so desperately trying to find is now being put on the stack, Mind's Desire, and their storm count is 35. However, his library size is actually 34, so he's now able to cast his whole deck from Exile. He starts by casting an Ignoble Hierarch, to which Late responds by activating Anya, discarding an Alchemist Greeting, in order to trigger Waste Knot and make Bruno draw from an empty library. Bruno responds by casting Noxious Revival from his graveyard to put Mana Confluence on top of his deck. He is safe this time, but Late proceeds to dig through his deck, discarding Stormcursed Occultist for another draw and a Zombie, and then discarding Revolutionist for the same triggers. He now discards a Chromox, triggering Waste Knot once again, to attempt to kill Bruno. During this huge turn and stack, Bruno ended up not drawing from the first trigger, after the Noxious Revival, and now, in response to Anya's ability, he attempts to Chain of Vapor his own Waste Knot but it is too late as the table understands and resolves the last draw, and this new draw trigger eventually kills him. This huge turn ends and we're finally on Eric's turn. He plays a mountain and after some looks at his graveyard, he casts his own Necromancy, targeting his World Gorger in the graveyard. Each time World Gorger enters the battlefield, he must exile all his other permanents, Necromancy included, which causes him to sacrifice World Gorger, triggering his last ability to return the exiled cards to the battlefield bringing Necromancy again and his lands and Chromox as well, which he taps to float mana. As he lacks Anya to draw between the loops and a black producing land, Late asks him to do it one by one, because he can only net one black mana if he exiles newly imprinted cards to the Chrome Mox, which he does, twice, imprinting his Strength of Lunacy and then an Archfiend of Spite, netting this way two black mana and then generates infinite red mana from his mountain. In the last iteration of the World Gorgia loop, when the Necromancy enters the battlefield again, he targets Revolutionist to bring to the battlefield, triggering and returning Tainted Pact from the graveyard to his hand. He now casts his Tainted Pact and keeps exiling cards until he finds Avacyn's Judgment. 
Still with infinite red mana, he uses the last black mana to cast his Anya Falcon Wrath and proceeds to activate her, discarding Avacyn's Judgment and casting it for its madness cost, killing both Late and Rodrigo. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! This was a crazy match where Rakdos decks showed they can bring the craziest interaction pieces to the game. That the Reds eventually decided the winner as both Anya players were holding onto Necromancy. The good thinking from late also took the game away from Bruno, so I guess that's unfortunate karma. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimu, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Hitachil, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsake, and Katarina, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!